Okay, cool. So uh, gang, what we're going to do today is we're going to go through uh, creating landing pages in command. Um, I've done a couple different classes on this. Uh, it seems to be a very popular topic lately. Uh, I think the last one that we did was how to do an open house landing page within command. This time we're going to focus on a listing, you know, pretty basic. Um, I think that every, once everybody gets in here and they see me kind of walk through the process, uh, they realize, hey, these landing pages aren't so hard after all. And, uh, you know, kind of get over the initial fear and, and then they start using them. Or Sarah, I know you mentioned uh, where you at before we're using them a lot. Um, so the landing pages, basically, there, there's a big difference between your agent site. Uh, that is your permanent residence on the Internet. That's always going to be, you know, of course, you and your bio, your contact information, your search engine, uh, you know, for your listings, et cetera. Uh, team information, you know, what other uh, other helpful links or tools or resources that you have on there. So that's kind of your permanent home on the internet. The landing pages, these are web pages that are more of a temporary or unique nature. So it could be a, you know, coming soon or a just listed uh, a house that you have, a, a listing that you have. I mentioned the open houses. Those have gotten very popular. Uh, one of the things that you're going to notice is when we add a, a contact form to our page, uh, if you do that on a landing page, whether it's a listing page or an open house page, uh, when people sign into that, it automatically captures their contact information, puts them into command as a contact. So it's a great way to make sure that you're getting people into your database uh, from the resources that you're using. Uh, the open house ones have gotten so popular because, you know, there's there's still people I talk to today, agents that are doing it the old school method. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, when people come in, they have a sign in sheet. People write their name and email address and phone number. Hopefully they put the information um, but doing it automatic like that, uh, Ash Gale does a great one. He's got a, a nice stand, an easel stand that, or an iPad stand that he bought on Amazon. And as people come in and he welcomes them, it's, it's a great way to do it. He just blames it on COVID and security. He says, hey, guys, welcome, you know, for security of the homeowner. And uh, we need to have you guys sign in because it's COVID. We can't print out any, you know, actual materials like marketing materials to give to you. So we need to make sure we're getting you guys this information. So please direct yourself to the stand, sign in. And as soon as they do it, boom, he's got contacts in command. So the old school way, you would go home the next day, probably you'd take your list and you'd be entering contacts in your database all day. This way you've already got them there and you can start plugging them in to an automated smart plan. And, uh, you know, it could be your open house follow-up smart plan. So maybe the next day it sends them a text says, thank you for coming. Maybe there's a two day delay and then you send them an email and it could be this landing page email that has all the home information, the neighborhood information, uh, everything they could want to know about the house. And then maybe a few days after that, you actually follow up with a personalized phone call. So it's a great way to automate your process, uh, save yourself some time, but then also get lead generation from your resources. And that's what, it, you know, a, a big part of what it really boils down to. Okay. Um, gang, I'm going to tell everybody as we're going along, feel free uh, at any point in time, you know, just come off a mute and ask a question if you have one. Uh, or like I mentioned before, we're going to have a, a little Q&A at the end. And if anybody has any questions about anything that I covered, feel free to, to throw it out there. Okay. Um, we, we are pushing, I, I like to tell people we're, we're actually pushing about 300 agents here, consultants. Uh, the reason I say that is I never know, uh, being the tech director, like who's learned what, who's done what in command. So if I show you something that you already know or you've already done, don't worry. I just want to make sure we cover our basis for everybody. I never like to assume anything. So the very first thing before you run off creating stuff, whether it's a landing page, uh, social media ads and design, you know, uh, uh, your agent site, what I'd like you to do sometime, you can follow along and do it or feel free to do this later so you can pay attention. But in command over on the upper right hand corner here, I've got my uh, my headshot photo of my name. When I click on that, I get a menu and I'm going to go down to settings. OK. And give it a second. And when you first come into settings, this is where you can see, hey, I'm, I'm connected to DocuSign or DotLube. You've got your Facebook realtor uh, business page that you're connected to, hopefully, uh, so that you can do your posts, your social media posts, uh, your ads, et cetera. Uh, what I want to show you is over here on the left hand side, you've got all these different settings, general settings, command settings, connect settings. If you click on the connect settings, you're going to see your marketing profile. We're going to spend a minute in this real quick. Um, I always bring this up because, again, I don't like to assume that everybody has set this up properly or not. Uh, I found that some people haven't. Um, if you were to just start going and creating your landing pages and your, your uh, uh, marketing tools, et cetera, within command, 
and you hadn't filled this out yet, you, every single time you create something, you're going to have to upload a headshot photo, put in your name, put in your contact information, email address, et cetera. The marketing profile here, what it does is, is you set it up one time. And then anytime that you create something like an agent, your agent site or a landing page, it's going to take all this information from your marketing profile and it's going to autofill it into the templates and what we call widgets. We'll talk about those later uh, when you're creating the web pages and it's going to save you a ton of time. So if you haven't done this yet, or even if you had, I would encourage you to go back and check this. Uh, you can see right here, this uh, default setting should be turned on by default. It says, use my information to brand my agent sites. Um, I have found a couple of times that that has been turned off. So make sure that that's on. And as we scroll through, you're going to see the types of things in your marketing profile that it has. You've got your headshot photo. That is a requirement. Uh, you've got a team logo here if you're part of a team. Uh, anything that's got a red asterisk next to it is a required field. So obviously, you want your name on there, first name, last name. Uh, you can put your agent license number. Those are optional. Your team name. Uh, what's your professional job title, usually realtor, any uh, designations, professional accreditations or credentials that you have. There's a nice bio area here. And if you see, I'll try and put, scroll real slow, but this is actually a pretty big and, and beefy area for your bio. Um, I've had people ask me, uh, you know, how much of a bio can I put in there? Is it really long, really short? Uh, I do believe the default setting is around 2,000 or 3,000 characters, if I remember right. Um, so it's pretty good. Um, so definitely want to make sure if you have not updated this, that you do that at some point in time. Um, you could always copy it over from your resume if you have that, um, or from your LinkedIn profile, if you have a description there, or if you just want to go in and write it up from scratch, that's cool too. Uh, continuing to go down, you've got some other areas here for your mobile phone, your office phone, uh, fax number, your email address, your website. Uh, down below, you've got your DBA logo or your uh, market center logo. Um, if anybody does not have these logos for KW Consultants or you want the diff or, or all the different versions, there's like web versions, there's uh, CMYK, which is your high quality, high resolution versions for print materials, et cetera. Uh, definitely go to the kwcresources.com page. That's where uh, Angela has all of our resources set up. And there's a shared Google folder there with all of these logos. So if that logo is not in there, definitely check out the resources page and download that and get it uploaded. Uh, you've got all your market center information over here on the right. Continuing to scroll down, you've got some areas here where you can put your legal uh, footer text. This is all optional, but if you prefer to put that in there, you can. Or if you're operating in another state that requires it, then of course put it in there. Uh, or you could have a legal footer link or a legal footer image. Uh, down below, you have your social media uh, pages. These are optional. Um, I get a couple of questions. One, you know, hey, David, which social media should I be on? Um, and if I'm not on certain ones, should I worry about that and start doing it? So here, here's my two cents on social media. Um, Command integrates with social media posts for Facebook and for Twitter. Um, it, it integrates with uh, social media advertisements through Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and then you can run Google ads as well. Okay, so at a minimum, I would make sure that you've got a realtor page, uh, business page on Facebook at a minimum, okay? Um, if you're on Instagram, that's great. If you're on Twitter, that's great. Most uh, professionals are on LinkedIn as well. Um, I bring up the Twitter thing because I, I actually, uh, I spent 17 years over at uh, CB Richard Ellis, uh, about uh, 12 years of that in the uh, local office, taking care of all the marketing needs of, of all our professionals. And I ran that Twitter page for about 13 years. Um, so between running a <laughs> like a business Twitter page and uh, not to get into politics, but between that and Donald Trump, I'm tweeted out. So I will not Twitter uh, tweet again <laughs> one time in the rest of my life. I'm done with it. However, for me, it would be important, and, and, and I, I pass this along to you, to, to at least look like you still have a strong social media presence. So my recommendation to everybody is don't worry if you're not on there. If you're on Facebook and LinkedIn, start doing social media posts on a regular habit. Uh, put them on both of your social media uh, uh, outlets. Um, and so you build up consistency, but put in the KWRI Twitter page. Or if you want to drill down even further, you know, grab the Instagram or the YouTube from Keller Williams Consultants. So it's more of a local flavor as well. Okay. That way, you know, it's going to a good page. You know, the content is still going to be updated regularly. And it does make you look like you have a strong social media presence as well, which is a good thing. Okay. Uh, down below, you've got your Facebook pixel and ads and Google Analytics ID. You won't worry about those for now. But the very last thing on here is your branded KW app link. 
Uh, that's a whole nother class for another time to go through the, the uh, consumer app and that. Uh, but if you do not have that branded link, uh, definitely set up a one-on-one -on -one with me sometime and I can help you get that set up. You're going to want to do that. It's our consumer facing app, uh, just like Twilly, or excuse me, not Twilly, but uh, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, Zillow. Gee, sorry, guys. I just <laughs> totally brain farted. I, I've been doing Twilio texting. That's our texting service. Sorry, I just had that name on the mind. Um, just like our version of Zillow, where your clients can go in, they can search for homes, save favorites, et cetera. Uh, the great thing about using that branded app is this little bell up here in command. You get notifications when your clients are doing things in the background. So it's kind of nice. You can see what they're doing, what if they've saved homes. And it kind of turns your cold calls into a warm call because you're kind of like Big Brother and you're watching what going on, goes on in the background, okay? I always tell everybody, don't stalk people personally on Facebook, okay? That's kind of creepy. Uh, <laughs> but if you're looking at what people are doing on your branded app, that's professional. Yeah, absolutely. Keep, keep an eye on that, okay? Uh, so here in Command, we've got all these different navigation icons on the left. We call these applets. Uh, I'm going to go down here to the very last one, which is Consumer. Yeah, Sarah, go right ahead. Um, before you leave this page, so I was trying to see if my photo was in there and it's not. Okay. Um, I tried to upload it while you were talking and it says image size should be um, 360 by 360 yes. pixels. Yeah. So with, and I guess mine is larger than that. Can you resize a photo or do you, should I contact someone in the marketing center to help with something like that? Yeah, you can, you can actually easily do it. Um, are you on a PC or a Mac, Sarah? Mac. A Mac? Okay, well, that, that might be a different piece in. Um, I don't know if you have access to Photoshop or uh, Photo Effects, one of, one of the, uh, the free apps from Adobe, um, or what comes okay. with the, uh, the photo editor that comes with the Mac um, on the operating system, but you should be able to uh, resize that in there uh, to, those, uh, to those pixels. And that's probably what's happening. You've got a high resolution, probably your headshot, mm -hmm. and the file size on that is just too big. Hang on, okay. somebody's in the chat right now. Oh, and there you go. And, and oh, Barb, that's really good of you. Thank you. Barb even chimed in. She says, hey, if you want to send me the pic, I can resize it. She's got Photoshop. She'd be happy to do that for you. Oh, thanks, Barb. So you rock, Barb. <laughs> yeah, you do rock. Always good to have good helpers. All right. Got a good question on that, by the way, Sarah. So thanks. All right. So again, I'm going to go down to the last applet here. This is our consumer app. Uh, you can see up at the top there, I've got a, a page for landing pages I've got, or an uh, area for landing pages. Uh, Sarah, she put her email address in the chat for you as well, so you can grab that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Barb. Uh, we've got landing pages up here. You can see some of the ones that I've created so far. You've got your agent site pages up at the top. This is your professional agent, KW agent site website. And then you've also got the guide builders as well for your KW app. And KWRI has actually included a really nice buyer's guide and a seller's guide. And you can actually come in here and you can customize these to put your own information, uh, obviously uh, brand it and personalize it to you as an agent, and then get those out to your clients as well. And I'm pretty sure we have a class on that the very last week in March, uh, if, if memory serves. So I'm going to go over here to landing pages, gang. And all we're going to do is we're just going to jump right in. We're going to just create a new page from scratch, okay? We've got a few different examples of things that might work for you here. So if you go up on the very top, uh, you've got this green button that says create a new page. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And when it gives you that window, it gives you two options. Do I want to create this on my agent site uh, as a sub page or do I want to do this as a landing page? OK, uh, create a landing page for lead generation. Now, remember, this is a standalone page. This does not go on your agent site. Excuse me, but the advantage of this is we can get a unique URL for it as well. And having that unique URL just for a listing page, you can now take that, you can email it, you can post it on social media, you can run it as a social media ad, you can text it to people, you can use that link in a whole nother landing page and have a collection, you know, hey, here's my premier houses and, or, or properties, and you could add all those different properties in there with a different link. So there's a variety of different things you can do, but the great thing is you get that unique individual URL as well, okay? So what we're going to do is a landing page. I'll select that and then I'll click on the green create page button. And then it's going to put us into the web page editor. Uh, Command has a habit of always throwing up these little screen tips down at the bottom there. If you ever see those, I just close them out because it takes up some of my screen space. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create our landing page and I'll, I'll show you how in a second. But the first thing I tell everybody is when you come in here, go ahead and up in the upper left hand corner here, let's go ahead and give this page a brand new name. Okay. 
So I'm going to do a uh, uh, I'm going to do a listing page for a property that uh, I've already got selected. Oops. Select that again. So on the, I'm going to uh, I always recommend to everybody. Um, you know what? Actually, let me do this for you. I'm going to name this practice page if I can type today practice page two, and you'll see why I'm going to do this uh, when we get done here. I'll tell you why I did this and then uh, we'll correct that. Um, what you've got on this page is you've got this big uh, area here where we can um, actually preview our content. And then over on the right hand side, we have got a series of what we call widgets. I mentioned them before, but there's a couple of columns of about five widgets. And all we do, these are pre formatted. The, the whole thing in command is they wanted it to be user friendly. Uh, they didn't want anybody to have to know, you know, like HTML or CSS coding to go in here and, and create a web page. They didn't want everybody to have to be uh, tech gurus. Uh, so they made it very easy for you. So what we're going to do is and, and you'll learn what all these widgets uh, are for over time, but I'm going to expose you to, to several of them today. So as we're building our web page, the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to add a branded header. And the way that these widgets work is when I click and hold my mouse down on this widget and then I slowly drag it over to the left, you're going to see that little green bar pop up. All I do is when I get it over there, I release it and boom, there's my branded header. Okay, right from the get go, you can already see that it pulled over some of my marketing profile. The marketing profile I showed you at the very beginning, it pulled over some of that information, which again, time saver. I'm all about saving you guys time. If, if I can teach you how to be uh, effective, that's great. If I can teach you how to be efficient, even better. So definitely get that marketing profile done. Uh, so my name, my phone number, my email address, and my headshot. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag over this listing widget. And notice if I move up and down, the reason I bring up that green line is wherever I, I have this thing positioned, that's where the widget's gonna go. It didn't really matter on the first one, but now that it's the second one, do I want it above it? Do I want it below it? Well, we did a header before, so that should be up at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this listing, just release my mouse and boom, it brings in the listing widget. And it's gonna have some of your property information. Uh, I'll show you how we can go in and we can choose our photo, choose the listing. Uh, your basic property information, uh, write up about the property, all the different photos from the MLS, detailed features, and including a neighborhood map on where that property is. So it brings in quite a bit of good stuff, okay? So we'll scroll down there. The next one we're going to do, uh, let's go ahead and do a market snap. If I'm going to show them the home, I, uh, since the very last thing on there is a map, we may as well give them some information about the neighborhood. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that market snap widget, drag it over, and I don't know if you caught that, uh, if there's any screen delay, did you guys see the little green line zip down there real quick? When I move my mouse, that means it moved down to the bottom. So now when I release it, there's that neighborhood, uh, uh, excuse me, the market snap neighborhood, uh, market snap widget <laughs> that tells you all the neighborhood information, not only the location, but here's uh, statistics about that area as well, okay? Uh, the next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, video is king lately. Uh, I don't know if anybody of you were on the, uh, the call we just did, was it uh, Ken Pozek? Uh, uh, last week, he's one of the top uh, 100 Gary Keller uh, uh, real estate agents in the nation. And he's just blown it up on YouTube. So um, any video content you can ever use, that's fantastic. So we're going to add the video widget. Um, it could be uh, maybe you were out in front of the house and you're just introducing yourself. Hey, this is Sarah. Guys, I want to welcome you to my new listing, such and such and such. Uh, I'd love to set up a, a private, uh, you know, walkthrough for uh, for you, uh, with you, et cetera. And, and you could just do a, like a personalized one. Some people actually have a home tour that, you know, they've done. Uh, some people have spent money on a lot of the luxury homes. They'll use what's called the Matterport 3D cameras and get a nice 3D video walkthrough. You can put those on there. Um, so a variety of different things you can do, drone aerial photography, uh, videos, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this video widget over. Again, you can, if you saw it, catch that green line pop down there. And when I let go, it's got a space for me for the video. And then the very last thing that I'm going to add is our uh, legal footer. Widget, I'll go ahead and grab this over. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's do, uh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's actually put the lead form in there. I, I definitely want to show you guys how this one works. Let's do that instead. I'm going to drag this lead form over and I'm going to kind of put it in the middle. Remember how if I move up, there's that green line. So I'm going to go in between the market snap and the video widget. And when I let go, there we go. You can see the contact form that pops in there. So that is one, two, three, four, five different widgets we've got in there now. Okay, so pretty good web page. 
All right, so when I do this, all I've done is I've taken, these are kind of, the widgets are kind of just templates. They have different pieces of information and graphics in there, but you're gonna to wanna to go in there obviously, and you're gonna to wanna to personalize this. My listing is not 300 Hilltop View in Austin, Texas, okay? So once you get the widgets over there, you've got this button over on the bottom right here that says configure widgets. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And when I do, you can see that uh, it tells me that I must configure each of your widgets below to publish this landing page. So I'm just gonna start from the top and I'm gonna work my way down, okay? I'll start off with the branded uh, header. I just click on that widget and it pops up right here. So before we edit that, uh, now that we're in the configure widgets, take a look at the top here. You can see that I'm in the branded header right up here. And then I've got these left and right navigation arrows and it tells me I am on widget one out of five widgets. So you can use these navigation arrows to like cycle back and forth and navigate through your widgets while you're working on getting them configured and getting them set up, okay? So the first thing, let's just go ahead and uh, welcome to 5448 uh, Lark Shire Port. Now this does have a, you can see what I ran into, right? This stuff has a, had, has a text limit on there. If you see it's 30 out of 30 characters, I exceeded that. And I, I wanted to do that on purpose, but you can see sometimes you got to get a little creative, do a little creative abbreviation or whatnot. But I, I did put the, uh, the abbreviation for court CT, and then I was able to put the explanation mark on there. Uh, any changes, if you want to see them right away, I just click on save and apply. And boom, you can see over here in our preview area that that, that title pops right up there, okay? Uh, the headshot photo here, again, it automatically pulled it over from my command my marketing profile, which is great. Uh, if you don't want a, a headshot on there, some people do, some people don't. You can always hit the little trash can button here. That would delete it. Uh, if you have an updated uh, headshot photo, or um, I know on some of the open houses, I've had agents where they have a different agent that's going to be doing the open house for them. Um, so you could use this button here to the left, which would allow you to change that out with another headshot photo. So that way, you know, if I've got a friend, uh, Bob, that's going to, you know, do my open house for me, I could put Bob's headshot on here. And then as people are coming to the house, they'll recognize Bob from the web page, which would be better than my smiley face. And they show up in the house and I'm like, who's this guy? Okay. <laughs> uh, and again, more information coming over from my profile. There's my name, my phone number. Um, this is just me. I, I kind of prefer the little dashes uh, in the phone number. I'm going to put those in there and we'll see if those stick or not. And then it pulls over my email address as well. If you have a team logo, I did not. Uh, I'm not on a team. Again, I'm not an agent, so I don't have one. But if you have one, uh, you know, uh, that you need to use, you can always uh, upload it here. If it was in your marketing profile, it would have come over as well. But if you have to put it here, you can. So now when I click on save and apply, you'll see all that stuff updates. And again, the dashes do work. So it, don't worry if you just had your basic phone number in your marketing profile, you can always update that, that format here. I do want to warn everybody because we've tried it before and apparently command doesn't like this. If you go with the style where you have the parentheses around the area code, it does not like that. It will kick you back out and say you have to have it in a proper format, but the dashes do work. I don't know why we put in a, sub, a submission to get that fixed. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully they'll be able to allow people to do that because some people just prefer that format or to have just a, an individual period or a dot in between each of the, the phone number sections. Okay. So that's that first header. Sarah, yeah, go ahead. So I might be a little bit behind. Um, I tried to, I was messing around with the photo. So um, when I went to create a design and in landing, I went to landing pages, it says create design, email, social, print, video, or import PDF. Oh yeah, you're, you're in the Am designs. I in the right place? No, yeah, yeah you're, you're in the design area. So you want to want to go to the very last applet on the very bottom uh, that consumer. says consumer. Yeah, that's all your webpage stuff. And then oh. the create the create new page button will be uh, that green button over on the upper right hand side. Okay, got it. So on there my agent site, is that something that I have to build? Yes, yes, that is something that you build, but I can assist you with that. Uh, we can either do training classes with that, or I can assist you with that, like one on one, if you want to do something like that as well. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, gang, so we're going to walk through the, the last of these widgets here. Again, up here at the top, you see the navigation arrows. I'm just going to click the right navigation arrow and go to widget number two, which is my listing. And again, it's not the right listing. It's just the default one it throws in. So I'm going to click on this browse listings, okay? Uh, pops up this window where I'm able to search for this by property. 
or, or by address, excuse me. So 5448, you can see that I have searched for this once or twice. This is actually a uh, house that my wife and I looked at in Hilliard, living out in Hilliard. And I, I fell in love with their back deck. I, I, I love the outdoors. They've got a great, like nice awning, great patio furniture, awesome deck, built-in uh, fireplace and everything, fire pit. Uh, fortunately, did not get the house, but I'm kind of jaded about it. So, but I just like using it as an example. Um, so I'll click on the search button in a, in, in a second here. I did want to bring up because uh, we've had people that go looking for this in the MLS and their property doesn't show up. If you look over here on the left-hand side where it says property address, there is a down arrow there. And there's a couple different ways you can search for your property. For some reason, it's not popping up in the MLS. You can directly type in the MLS number. Or if you know your KWLS ID number, you can throw that in there as well, and it will go and it will search that out for you. So don't ever stress if it doesn't pop right up. You got a couple other options there, okay? So now when I search for that, there we go. I can see it popping up already. It's got that nice sunset in the background there. This is just uh, right in our neighborhood too. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. And give it a second. This is always where a command likes to lock up on me. It's trying to pull all that information over from the MLS, including all of the high resolution photos uh, for the listing. So we'll give it just a second here. There I can see, I can see it's in the background. It looks like my screen's gonna hang up. I'm gonna try and uh, save this or refresh it. Hopefully this doesn't kick me out. And yep, I was afraid of that. All right, bear with me guys, just real quick. I'm gonna build this thing up. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, being the director of technology, I have uh, people ask me all the time, hey, you, you probably don't get any tech issues if you're the tech director, right? Uh, I think it's actually the opposite of that. I think we actually get more uh, technical issues than anybody else. <laughs> all right, let me just add this stuff again real quick. Uh, we'll pop that on. What was the other one we did? The uh, lead form, right? and then the video down at the very bottom. All right, let's try this one more time. Branded header, we'll just keep you the same. Absolutely. All right, let's get this listing again. I-448, Larkshire Court. And come on, come in, cooperate. Just bear with me, guys. True, man. Getting worried there for a second. Okay. <laughs> so now you can see that it's brought the MLS information in, uh, the listing from there. Uh, it always uh, starts off with the default or, or that uh, top photo typically, but you can see that it did bring in the whole photo gallery from the MLS. So you can scroll through these. Um, I mentioned that deck uh, that I was in love with so, more, so much. I'm going to click on that and hit save and apply. And now you can see a photo of exactly what I was talking about. I would send my entire summer out here. Uh, <laughs> Not a bad place since we're confined for COVID. Um, so that, that allows you to put the photo in there. Now, I do wanna bring up uh, this option over here, the custom image. Uh, if for some reason, uh, you can just click on that and it would allow you to click here, browse your computer and upload your own photo. I've had people ask me, why would I wanna do that? Well, sometimes maybe uh, the, the homeowners had a photographer come through and they have brand new photographs of your listing, but you haven't gotten the listing yet, or, or, or the photos haven't gotten to the MLS yet. That's one option. Or maybe they have a specific photo uh, that they want to use for marketing stuff. And in case it's not in the MLS, you can always put it here as well. I know a lot of times you, you can see in the background that these photos were taken in the fall or the winter because the trees are, are mostly dead. And some people like to get newer photos, you know, when spring or summer hits to make the properties look better. So if you did ever need to do that, you do have the option. Okay. Uh, we're going to stick with the one from the listing for now and go with that. And then I'm just going to come up here to the top again to these navigation arrows and we'll just bounce over to widget number three. 
And that one is our neighborhood uh, uh, trends. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop in the zip code here. So I know that one since I live there is 43026. And as soon as you pop the zip code in, it's going to give you all the different neighborhoods in that area. So I'm in Hilliard and I'm just off of the Hilliard Rome Road area. So there's Dublin Road, Village at River Run, Heights. Did I miss it? My day's going on. Village at Run, Old Hilliard. There we go, Hilliard Rome area. And then I'm just going to put a little uh, uh, text here, the header you can change that, of course, and say, welcome to the Hilliard Rome Road neighborhood. Okay. And notice there's no text limit on that. So you can type a, a decent title there. I'll click save and apply just to make sure that my changes took place. I don't know why every time you do that, it, it scrolls right back up to the top of the page. Uh, just wanted to warn you that it does. <laughs> So if you ever see that happen and then you go, oh, where'd my neighborhood go? It's there. So there you go. You can see, uh, oh yeah, that's uh, Raising Canes. I know that one. My two teenage boys love going there all the time. So, <laughs> so I did get the Hilliard uh, neighborhood and the information in there. Uh, and then it has some statistics whenever you do that, which is good as well. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to our next widget, <clears throat> excuse me, which is our lead form. And I'm going to say, uh, please, oops. I had it selected. I'm going to change this uh, header text. Goodness, my mouse is all over the board. Uh, please contact me to schedule a private home tour today. Okay, whatever you want to put in there. And when I click on save and apply, again, it always goes up to the top. And when I scroll back down, you can see that that has updated to whatever you want the title to be. Now, I have had agents ask me this can we choose? Uh, which fields we want to capture people's contact information. Uh, unfortunately, the answer to that currently is no. Uh, command has this set for you already. It's first name, last name, email address, phone number, and then a note. So uh, it, they do have to put all, something in each of those fields, though. Each one of those is required, okay? Um, I mentioned before that, uh, that Ash, when uh, he does his open houses and he's got his little easel set up. Uh, what is that, Barb? Oh, can the colors be changed? Thank you. That's a great question. Uh, Barb, unfortunately, no. That's another question that's been asked because a lot of people like to change that color or would like to change that color to uh, brand the landing page uh, to their team colors uh, if, if you're on a team. So currently you cannot, but they are working on that as one of our enhancements. We're hoping to see that soon so that you can choose the actual fields that you capture and the colors as well. The colors is a big one because of, of marketing uh, coloring scheme. So great question, Barb. Um, the thing that I, I was going to mention about Ash is uh, when he has them come to, a, to an open house, he'll actually ask them, you know, he'll say, hey, will you please sign in? And when you put your contact information, there's an area to leave a note. Would you please, uh, in that field, put who referred you to come look at the house or what was the source? So that way you can kind of tell where your sources are. If it was another agent, if it was a friend, maybe they saw it from your Facebook ad. Uh, that's a great way to get some background information on those as well. Okay. All right, so then uh, we're going to go up here. I, I scrolled manually, but yeah, let's use these navigation arrows trying to get you in the habit of using. We'll go to number five, which is our video. And for the video, uh, please feel free to take this virtual spell today or type today, virtual tour of our luxury home. And I could put a description down out there if I wanted to for time's purposes. I'm going to skip that. But I do have a YouTube channel pulled up here. I found a, a great vacation property. You might want to check this one out, Sarah, for you and your kids. Uh, <laughs> it's in the Outer Banks. Uh, just a property that you can rent. Now, you do have the option when you go here that you can upload a video. So if you have the actual video, of course, you can upload that file. Uh, all I would do is click here and click on browse and you can upload that file right into the page. Okay. It will automatically optimize that. I, I have not heard that there is a file limit size, um, but I would guess that if the video is too long or if it's, uh, you know, extremely like 4K resolution, uh, that you might hit a file limit size. I haven't heard of anybody doing that yet, but it is possible. Okay. 
But for now, I'm going to use this use a video URL. So I just copied that URL from YouTube uh, for the luxury home that I found. And so now when I click on save and apply, I should see my headline update. Scroll back down there. And then also should get the, uh, the thumbnail. Boom. There's that. I love that kitchen. Oh, my gosh. Uh, a lot of people think that's too dark, but I, I just love the bar and the, the kitchen uh, island and everything. So, okay. So that's our basic landing page, guys. So um, what I can do now, a couple different things. I, I don't want anybody to freak out if you're doing the landing page building process and you make a mistake. I always like to point these buttons out. If you ever use Microsoft Word, remember you had the undo and the redo buttons, the little circles up at the top of the toolbar. You have those here as well. So here's your undo button. Here's your redo button. And then you've got a preview button here as well. You can preview that base over here on the right as a desktop image. Uh, how it's going to look on a tablet or how it's going to look on a mobile. I, and I'll just click on them so you can see them. I mean, basically it just shrinks it down to the dimensions of a phone or a tablet. But you can see that it does auto adjust the content as well, which is kind of nice. Um, but it's nice to do that and still kind of scroll down and see if you have any errors or anything. Okay. Um, we got kicked out earlier. So let me go ahead and give this a new name again. I think I called it practice page uh, R3 now. I hit save one more time. So I've got a couple different options here. I can just save the landing page right now, which would put it back out into my consumer menu where we were at before in command, or I can go ahead and publish the page, which is what I'm going to do right now. When you click on that publish page button, it's going to tell you, hey, are you sure you want to publish this? It's going to make it visible to everybody. So when you do publish, this will be live on the internet. Okay. So if you have another um, agent or maybe the rainmaker on your team or another agent on your team, you could just save the landing page, bring them over to your desk and, you know, share that with them. Um, if you have another client, or maybe it's, you know, another agent that you're working with, or maybe the homeowner that needs to review that first, you can go ahead and just publish this page and then send them the URL to go ahead and review it. I wouldn't worry that people are finding it uh, out on the web. Um, we, we haven't like given it an individual name. It's got basically the URL, the web page. It's going to be a bunch of gobbledygook right now, and you'll see that in a minute. So don't worry that a bunch of people are going to rush to a page that the owner hasn't approved yet. Okay, is my point. I'll click on yes. And the gears are turning, it's thinking, and boom, practice page is now done. So you can see that it is done. We have a URL over here. And this is the gobbledygook I mentioned, C0VU. I mean, it's literally just a bunch of random numbers and letters for the URL. It's not very memorable, okay? Um, the other thing is, if I didn't give it a proper name over here, then I, I don't know the address. So as you start to build these landing pages, you're gonna to wanna to give it a smart name. I would do it by address, okay? That's why I wanna give it the wrong name so you can see what I was talking about. Uh, so what I can do is these three little dots, these three little ellipses, that's your menus. And when I click on that, I can always go back in and edit again. Okay, see it takes me right back there. And so now that I'm editing, I wanna go ahead and give it a proper name, 4448 Larkshire Court. Failure in Ohio. Okay. And I'll go ahead and save that landing page. Are you sure you want to update this? Absolutely. And there you go. So now within my menu, I can definitely tell uh, what landing page that is based on the address. Okay. The other thing that I can do from this menu, the three little ellipses, when I click on that, I can hit this change URL option. And I'm going to do that. And now you can't change this first one. Okay. But the very last one, I am going to go ahead and change that to the address, okay, to uh, oops, Larkshire Court. And when I hit on the create button, you're gonna see that that URL did update. So that the last part of that is 5448 Larkshire Court. That way it's showing up in search engines. The web crawlers can look at that. So it'll show up in your uh, search engines on, on Google and, and Bing and Chrome, all that other good stuff, okay? Excuse me, guys. So now when I go ahead and I click on this URL, is going to take me. Remember, this is live on the web right now. So here's our page. I'm going to scroll down just to kind of take a look at it. There's my great photo. It's got the housing information that I pulled in from the MLS. The entire photo library is in there. I can scroll through all those by using the arrows or clicking down here. Um, I've got the, uh, the statistics on the house, the details on the house. I've got a house location map. I've got the neighborhood. Uh, we grab that, so it shows the neighborhood and some neighborhood statistics. I've got this form here. We'll come back to that in just one second. And then I've got this great video. And when I click on that, sure enough, 
there we go. Well, hopefully that, that's really loud in my ear. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Kind of fast forward a little bit. There we go. So again, this is just a URL that I grabbed off of YouTube, but this could be uh, one that um, that you guys have created uh, that you could upload the file to, or if you have it posted somewhere else out on the web. Let's see, Barb, does command have a way to see the metrics for how many people visit the page, or would it be better to give it a bit.ly address when posting links to the page? Uh, Barb, that's a great question. Let, let me defer that for just one second, because I'm going to show you an example of exactly what you're asking there, okay? Well, but I'm going to come back to that. All right, so let's say that I actually did want to set up a private tour of this. So um, I'm, I'm a consumer. I, I've received this, this uh, link, this web page from you somehow. It could have been a social media post again, could have been a text, could have been an ad, uh, could have been, you know, uh, however it is that you're putting this out there, an email campaign, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in some info. Um, I'm going to, I always use fictitious characters. Uh, in my uh, contact database. So if you don't know who Clint Barton is, uh, he's the he's in the Avengers. He's Hawkeye. So uh, his email address is going to be Hawkeye at the Avengers. Dot com. Uh, phone number. We'll keep him 614-555-0864. Uh, I think I've used that one yet. Would love to tour this home to see if it's a fit for the Avengers. They'll put whatever they want in there. <laughs> okay. And it does have this little capture on here, so it makes sure you're not getting a bunch of spam stuff. I'm not a robot. I'm going to click on that. It may ask you to do one of these things. Click everything. It's a school bus. Hopefully I got them all. Click on next. Going to give me bicycles too. Got to love it when it goes through two of these things. There we go. Check mark, and we're good to go. Okay. So the consumer did that at some point in time. Now, what you're going to see, I'm going to come up here to my contact. Uh, whoops. Hit the home button. Sorry. Let's go to our contact screen right here. And if I scroll over here to my most recent contact, whoop, where'd he go? Might have to refresh the page sometimes. Make sure I refresh that one. Pushing the info through. And it's going to prove me wrong today. What will normally happen is <laughs> your contact will show up right here. There's a, there is a little bit of a delay sometimes. We've already seen the command was being buggy and, and locking up on me. So hopefully by the time we get off here, uh, we will have a brand new contact there. Uh, but going back to Barb's question, let me try and refresh that again. There we go. And that's how I can tell it hasn't captured it yet. So Barb, um, you, you asked a very good question. Does this give you statistics about visitors and whatnot? Um, unfortunately, it, it doesn't have that built into command yet. That's one of the other advancements of doing it. But what it will tell you over here is the amount of leads that you have captured from any landing pages. So whether this is a listing page, uh, whether it's the open houses, obviously, probably off of an open house, you're going to get a lot more on there, maybe over the course of a weekend, you had 40 people to tromp through there. Uh, so you will be able to see the amount of leads that, that pop in there, but not necessarily web statistics. So for now, anyways, if you're wanting to uh, uh, get statistics like that and use those to evaluate the effectiveness of your web program, then you might have to go with uh, a bit.ly uh, uh, URL. Gang, let me pop back over here to contacts again. Sometimes this takes a minute to go through. I'm going to refresh the web page again. And still not seeing him handy. Should pop in as my 14th contact, but it's not popping in yet. So you guys get the idea though. That would there is a delay going on. I'm going to attribute that to uh, to commands delay right now. Uh, but Clint Barton should pop in here anytime now. And the great thing about doing that is now I can take him and just like my other contacts you've seen, I've got all, you know, we've got Dr. Uh, Strange, Incredible Hole, Peter Parker, et cetera. Uh, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate you showing up, buddy. Appreciate it, bud. Yeah, uh, Scott's got to run. 
um, in your contacts when you're using those custom tags, I've got people mark, hey, these are the Avengers, these are the Justice Leagues. I know that's one example, but you could have the tag set up for landing page and then the address, or you can have a, a custom tag open house with the address on there. And as you're getting these new contacts, you can mark them with that tag. The cool thing about doing that is that now you can go over here to your smart plans and you can start doing automated follow-ups from these things with the contacts that you've already tagged. I could have already have one created. Uh, if it's a listing page, I, you know, again, maybe I want to send them a web page with all of the information. Uh, maybe I want to send them a text. Thank you for checking out our web page. You're probably wondering how you know that they've done that in the background. Well, it's because they submitted your contact info. And then maybe the next one is an email that I've made for them to schedule uh, their, their private showing uh, or, or uh, for the listing, okay? Uh, or if it's an open house, it could be, a, you know, thank you for coming to the open house and then sending the information. So that's kind of the power of those landing pages with that, with that uh, form, that lead form, okay? Is to capture those, they pop immediately, or not immediately, we can see, <laughs> they do pop into command uh, automatically as contacts. Uh, even if there's a lay, and then you can immediately start using them in your smart plans as well. So again, love to teach you guys to be effective, but if I can teach you to be efficient as well, those are great time-saving tips. And that's all comes from a listing landing page uh, that we can make in command. And it may have taken me, you know, 30, 40 minutes to walk you through this for the first time, but knowing this in the background now, uh, we've got people that can, can pump out a, a landing page, a basic uh, landing page, in probably about 15 to 20 minutes, you know, half an hour tops if you've got to update a lot of information on there. Uh, that's not a bad return on your investment of time uh, to get that lead generation going from that, okay? So gang, that's all I have right now uh, to show you guys. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Uh, let's see, we got Sarah and Barb left. Do you guys have any questions or anything over what we've covered today? So can you link those pages to your agent page? You can, Sarah. Yeah, you can actually, uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can either have this um, as a landing page that you promote uh, until the, the listing becomes active and then you can actually pull it onto your agent page, uh, either by putting it onto your featured homes or the MLS, or you could create a page where you just grab all these URLs and you can add them on there as well. And I'm glad you asked that because that, that actually brings up a whole nother question. Um, if I ultimately, if, if this house is on the market, it's not like a coming soon now, maybe that's how I, I uh, marketed the web page. Right. You can come over here to the page options and you can deactivate this web page. It will keep the web page here in your command consumer area, but it will take it off of the web because now it, the, the coming soon is over, the open house is over, and now you are representing that on your individual agent site or your team site. So yeah, great question. Okay. Okay. All right, Barb, do you have anything else? I see the chat going there. Let's see what we got. Uh, doesn't toggle the status button. Yes, Barb, you're absolutely correct. The status button over here on the right-hand side, I can do the same thing. If I click on this, uh, you're going to see it ask me, are you sure you want to change the status to an active, which is exactly what we did over here, which was to deactivate it. So you are correct. You can do it here or you can do it over here. A couple different ways to do it. Uh, I always say there's about skin, six different ways to, to skin a cat. Uh, but we own a cat, so we don't want to be skinning their cat. So, <laughs> uh, let's see, Barb, is there a way to schedule a deactivation? Um, unfortunately, there's not. Let me go uh, over here. You'll see when I do the uh, deactivate, Oops. it gives me the same exact option here. Are you sure you want to set this to inactive? When I click on yes, it just immediately does it. There's no way to say, oh, I'm going to set this up for, you know, hey, uh, listings going onto our webpage. We're going to kill this automatically on Saturday. Uh, that would be a cool feature if we are able to add that in the future um, to be able to automate that process. But as of right now, it does not. Okay. I'll go ahead and turn that back on for now. Great question also. Okay. All right, ladies, was there anything else you might have any questions on? Okay. Uh, hang on, I see the chat. Thanks for all you. Okay, cool. Thank